Oh well, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Fishing with Rod. Um, in the last several weeks, many of you have been asking me, Rod, can you just go out and film a steelhead fishing episode, please? Um, as if it's really easy to catch a steelhead and then put together a video like this. You know, I I know how to catch steelhead, but I've never claimed that I'm very good at it. Um, there are many other hot young top rods out there who are very good at it and they catch many, many more fish than me. Um, they simply don't disclose the information, understandably so, um, but yeah. But in the last few weeks, I have been spending a bit of time fishing on and off for winter steelhead, and here it is. I'm gonna show you an episode right now. During the season, in the past, um, I've always fished throughout the season, and then put together an episode near the end of the season, which isn't really that great because you want to watch it during the season, right? So here we have it. Um, this particular video is not very edited. Um, I purposely done it that way compared to some of my previous other episodes. Um, I've also left some of my own commentary uh, in the video as well. So hopefully you'll find some instructional value attached to it. I have a few more things to say near the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, I hope you will enjoy this. Let's go! So I am pretty lucky. Being so close at the river, usually when I get out, I don't spend more than a couple hours at a time. Um, I will go out and cover a few runs and try again on the following day. This is easily the most heavily fished river in British Columbia, even during the steel season. Your chance of getting a fish is pretty slim, not because they are pretty picky, but there are just very few of them. Um, we're talking about a couple thousand fish returning throughout the entire season from December to May, as opposed to tens of thousands of fish returning during the fall salmon season between September and November. The most common method used for steelhead fishing is float fishing. Um, basically, you're suspending a piece of bait or any artificial presentation uh, of the bottom with a float and uh, by drifting this downstream, you're hoping that the steelhead will see it and bite onto it. So the goal is to cover as many spots as possible to increase the chance of encountering a fish. Usually, if you place an offering in front of the steelhead, it will bite it within the first few casts. So my strategy is to constantly be on the move, drifting my float through where I think the fish might be, adjusting the float depth from time to time as well so that the bait isn't sitting on the bottom or sitting too far off the bottom. This is the bait I like to use. A shrimp is threaded on the jig hook. It's not as messy as roll or any other bait and still seem to like it a lot. There is a fair amount of fishing pressure. Um, these fish would in fact sit in waters where they normally wouldn't sit in. I've caught them in water as shallow as one foot. Uh, they tend to hang out in slightly faster water to take cover. You don't want to spend too much time at one spot, but you want to fish it thoroughly. So on this particular day, I started around lunchtime and I had a couple hours to fish until about 3 o'clock when kids get home from school. We always start fishing at the head of the run and slowly proceed down. How fast I walk down the run really depends on what the other anglers are doing. Um, I'm always being observant. If the other angler is working through the run pretty fast, then I really don't have much to worry about. But if the other angler is taking his or her time, then I might slow down a little bit instead of rushing right through. If it appears the individual isn't moving at all, I might just start working my way down and uh, as I approach the angler, I might say hi and just ask if I could go around him or her. Communication really goes a long way and can avoid any misunderstanding at the river. Everyone is out there having a good time, so I'm sure most people would be understanding and accommodating. This particular run is fairly long and wide, so the fish could be anywhere really. So you kind of want to take your time fishing it pretty thoroughly. 
by casting further out, doing a drip foot closer in. You gotta remember it's just after lunch, so the run has been worked through by many other angles in the morning. So you wanna be slightly more thorough in this case. This one, this one, this a fish. It like went for it once and then came back. That first bite was so tiny. It was a snack, but then came back again. Wild. <coughs> you wanna give me a hand? <laughs> you wanna give me a hand? Yeah, yeah. It's wild, so I just wanna. I don't want to bring in too much. Me, yeah. yeah, it's uh. I thought you said a bag at first. I was like, I got a bag. I was like, no, I just want to net it because it's wild. I'll, I'll keep it in the water, so you I'll get a. Net off your bag? Yeah, that'll be great. Just you can just pull it out. And... Nice one, right? Yeah, thanks. Nice fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I didn't even notice. I was no, that's alright. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oops. Oops. <laughs> yeah, it's, we'll get it. Yeah. There we go. That's a bit of. Yeah. There we go. Grab your rod and get a picture. Yeah, maybe. I'll. I'll, I'll... I, I, I have a camera. You can <laughs> yeah, I can. I can. Uh, I'll get my camera out and. Hold your rod. Yeah. Nice thanks. Fish, dude. Yeah. Thanks. What do you figure? Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's pretty pretty well hooked actually. Yeah, yeah I'll, maybe I'll get you to. Uh, yeah. it's, it's right in there. Eh? Like, I don't, see. I don't yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll keep it in there. Well, it's thick. <laughs> yeah, I see that's more than eleven. Yeah. Twelve. Thirteen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it it went full once, yeah. and uh, the bite was tiny, 
I was like, huh, that was weird. So I went back, cast it again, and bam, just second time it went, it went down. Actually, wait, wait, I'm gonna let it go. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you. Yeah. Nice yeah. yeah. There he goes. <laughs> I think it was a she. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell by the, yeah. the jawline, right? Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Dude. yeah. yeah. Well, there you have it. First fish of the season in early February. Um, typically, we do get a push in early February. Um, these fish come into the river in waves. So in early January, we saw quite a few fish coming in, but then it was a bit of a dead spot. Then early February right now, we saw some fish again, and I'm sure we'll see a few more waves in March and April as well. The winter seal fishing season is pretty long. It starts in December all the way until May, and uh, these fish are rainbow trout, which are anadromous, like a salmon, so they will go into the ocean uh, once the eggs hatch in the river, after, after spending one year in the river, and uh, they'll grow in the ocean. That's why they get so big. You know, this particular fish was around, I'm gonna say around 10 pounds, you know, 11 pounds, maybe generous, um, but they do get much bigger than that. 15 to 20 pound fish have been caught in the past. And uh, yeah, so that's how they get big. They grow in the ocean, then they come back, they spawn in the river. And uh, unlike a salmon, these fish do not die after they spawn. So they can actually go out into the ocean again and spawn repeatedly over the years and keep growing. So yeah, it's a very, very fun fishery. Um, it's very challenging, but when you do hook, hook one, it's very, very rewarding. Uh, several things you gotta know, you gotta have your BC freshwater fishing license if you wanna fish in any rivers and lakes. And uh, if you're targeting steelhead, if you're fishing for steelhead, even just for catching and releasing, you gotta pay for a steelhead conservation surcharge as well. Um, all of that money, um, it's great investment because the conservation surcharge goes to the Habitat Trust uh, conservation Trust Foundation, which funds many conservation projects across the province. Uh, the freshwater fishing license that you pay for, um, that money goes to the Freshwater Fisheries Society BC, uh, which is actually um, responsible for the steelhead program as well. So it's money worth spending. Uh, make sure your hook is barbless, and uh, because you know it's it's well, it's first of all, it's the law you have to have use a barbless hook and the reason the hook is barbless so you can actually release the fish pretty easily that fish that hook has to come out pretty easily for good release and um, as you saw in the video i had a catch and release landing net with me which made things way easier you can land that fish a lot faster with the net and uh, without dragging the fish near the shallow water so the fish wouldn't be pounding like bouncing around in the shallows um, this can really prevent any injuries potential injuries if the fish have to be released and yeah you just lose less fish if you have a net with you so i totally encourage everyone to go get a catch and release uh, net so that particular net i'm using is the moby dnk special i featured that net in many of my previous videos so you can go check it out um, what else do you need to know? Oh, etiquette. So etiquette is not really a regu is, not really regulations, um, but it's just something, it's more of an unspoken rules at the river. Um, but the way I look at it is that um, treat other people like the way you want to be treated. Uh, just have some respect. Um, when you're fishing, uh, run, always start from the very top. Don't go below someone who's working their way down. And um, also just ask. You know, sometimes, like I say, just ask and people should be, will be more than happy to help you out. Just like I, I asked um, my new friend here, Kyle, to net the fish for me and he was very happy to do so. I, really, I was really thankful he was there to net the fish for me and also taking the photograph for me. So yeah, this is a, it's a great fishing opportunities you can have in the winter time. So if you have any other questions regarding fishing for steelhead, um, in British Columbia, um, make sure you leave a comment on the bottom. I'll do my best to answer your questions and um, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. I really appreciate your support and until next time, good luck fishing.